There we go. Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Lee from We Love Hockey. I want to welcome you to the first, maybe the last, we'll see, edition of this show that we're calling Puck Drop. Uh, long story short, <clears throat> we all know what's going on in the world right now. And everyone has been saying, like, what am I going to do without hockey? I don't know what I'm going to do without hockey. Well, it's, it's 2020. <laughs> and my belief system tells me that with all this digital technology, uh, we can still have a pretty good hockey conversation um, together. Right. <clears throat> so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to bring up a topic. We're going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about coronavirus, COVID-19 or anything else is going on. <clears throat> I know many of you out there are facing a situation uh, where uh, your kids are probably going to be home from school for the next two weeks or longer um, or work situations. So let this chat, let this whatever it is, whatever it becomes, be your escape. Again, don't want to talk too much about anything with uh, world events outside of hockey right now. So uh, that's what I want to do. All right. So listen, so what we're going to do is I'm going to bring up a topic. All right. I want you guys to comment on the topic. Uh, it's going to be controversial, hopefully within the game. And uh, hopefully we'll find a way to uh, get through this together and find a way to enjoy each other's company uh, while we're talking about uh, the NHL or hockey in general and everything else that we love about the game. So tonight's topic. Okay. I thought about this. It's something that's been hot in the NHL this year, and it's a pretty simple question. Okay, um, it is this: Can this man, can this man, Alex Ovechkin, catch this man in goals scored? This is Wayne Gretzky. This is actually Wayne Gretzky, uh, sir. of the time period he scored uh, his uh, 802 goal to become all, all time. In fact, this is uh, the most points all time: 1,851 points, October 15th. 1989. This is Alex Ovechkin as an assistant captain, probably from sort of 2007-8 period. I don't know, whenever they changed their jerseys. Uh, so the question I have today, what I want to discuss in hockey is, can Alex Ovechkin break the goal record set by this man, Wayne Gretzky? If you don't like that Wayne Gretzky, I have a second Wayne Gretzky, uh, a Rangers Wayne Gretzky right here, uh, who who is retiring in this one. And, and somewhere else, uh, it might be behind me on the, on the, uh, the rack here of accomplishments, but I have a Edmonton Oilers Wayne Gretzky with a Stanley Cup somewhere too. So that's the question I want to discuss tonight is can Alex Ovechkin catch up to Wayne Gretzky in goals um, and become the greatest goal scorer in the history of the NHL? And, you know, it also begs the question, is he already the greatest goal sc uh, scorer in the history of the NHL? <clears throat> so how this is going to work is I'm going to talk a little bit so people come on the live stream. Please feel free to comment. <clears throat> uh, I will read your comments out loud. I've got my cell phone out. I've got Facebook up on my desktop. We got a lot of stuff going on. In fact, this is kind of surreal. I'm talking to myself now while watching myself delayed. Um, but yes, please comment. Let me know your thoughts. So here's the first deal. Okay. And I, I also have my internet up here so I can look at some stats. All right. Um, Alex Ovechkin, I believe this, is already the greatest goal scorer of all time um, in terms of a natural goal scorer. All right. And the reason I believe that is the time period he's playing in and the amount of goals that he's able to put up is pretty unprecedented when you think about it. Um, uh, Joe Fala, thanks for saying hey, because I hadn't seen one comment until you wrote something, and now I know people are actually watching this, which brings comfort to my heart. All right, so I, I've already got people disagreeing with me. Hear me out. Hear me out, okay? For Alex Ovechkin to be putting up the amount of goals that he's putting up right now at this point of his career, keeping in mind he probably still has six, seven, possibly eight years left. Um, <clears throat> I know Gretzky played in a different era, and I'm a huge Wayne Gretzky fan, so don't let that bug you guys at home. All right, but he's doing things that are pretty unprecedented uh, in a time period where goalies are the best they've ever been, right? So I think in terms of pure goal scoring, he is he is the greatest goal scorer that ever lived. He'll never catch Gretzky in points, obviously. And again, there I, I'm I'm debating the greatest goal scorer of all time, not greatest player of all time, not greatest point scorer of all time, greatest goal scorer of all time. In terms of pure goal scorer, he's already up there with the greats: Brett Hall, Wayne Gretzky, Rocket Richard. Um, you know, the question is, will he catch Gretzky? Um, we've all done the math on this. <clears throat> you know, he's he's about 190 away. I'll look it up. Uh, but if he continues to keep a good pace, he is going to catch up to Gretzky and, and surpass him. And keep in mind, Gretzky's actually said that he wants him to break the record. And uh, he's been super, obviously, Wayne Gretzky about this whole situation. He's a great human being. Um, but we'll see. So some comments coming in already. Kyle Dowd says, goal record is obtainable. Points will forever be untouched. I agree with you on that. Obviously, Ovi is by far the best score, goal scorer of our generation and previous generations. Kyle, I completely agree with you on this, right? Um, I'm not going to do scenarios like, hey, if you put Ovechkin back in the 1980s or you put Gretzky into the 2000s or 2020s now, 
uh, because th- it's not a fair comparison. Gretzky was the greatest player of his generation. Ovechkin is one of the greatest players of his generation. But in terms of goal scoring, uh, it's unprecedented what he's able to do against these goaltenders. And it, there was actually a heat chart of all of Ovechkin's goals that have been scored. And it was all over the, the zone, even one of them was outside of the zone. It wasn't just the top left circle where he scores all his power play goals, which is always phenomenal to watch. Um, although you got to keep in mind, I, I've said this before, he scores a lot from there. Goalies know he's there. Uh, he's left alone a lot more than he probably should be. But I mean, that's a testament that the guy shoots a lot from there and still scores. But when you look at the heat chart of all of Ovechkin's goals, he scored from from everywhere. Now, again, this is a community show. I want you to comment. I will read your name. I'll, I'll say your comments. We can discuss it. We can actually discuss whatever you want on this show, as long as it's hockey related. Doesn't start with C. End in nineteen. I don't want to talk about what's going on in the world. This is the hockey fix. I need this as much as you need this. That's why we're doing this. So welcome aboard to all of you coming in. All right. So uh, Tim Brosnan, Gretzky had the two line r- rule to deal with. Uh, that's true, Tim. Um, but I don't know if that's that's enough for me to to disfigure a uh, disfigure. Sorry, to, to discount Ovechkin. Uh, it definitely has helped offense in the NHL in recent years. Uh, but there's a lot of rules. I mean, Gretzky had to deal with clutch and grab. Right. I mean, Ovechkin doesn't have to deal with that. There, there's a lot of things that could go back and forth with Gretzky. Also, I mean, if you want the ultimate like these are those. I mean, the equipment the goalie is wearing and the the evolution of the goaltender in the 1980s, um, we're still coming out of the stand-up style. Uh, Gretzky had a clear advantage, in my opinion, uh, when it came to scoring. All right. Um, again, I don't want to do the, if you put Gretzky in today's game, it, it's not a fair comparison. Um, or, or again, throwing out Ovechkin, because you could throw any NHL player today back in the 1980s, he'd be the greatest goal scorer of all time. It's simply, he's doing the numbers relevant to Gretzky in today's situation. I believe Ovechkin is the greatest goal scorer in the history of hockey, even if he doesn't hit that record. I'm saying that. Pure goal scorer. That's what I'm trying to say. Obviously, the record will make that finite. Let's keep going here. Uh, Pat Silva, can we get one of Giroux holding up the cup? I have one of Giroux. Um, I got a Bobby Clark back there. Where's Giroux? There's, uh, that's Simone Gagne. I have, I have a Giroux somewhere. I have a Malkin one too. I didn't put it up. <laughs> it's on purpose. All right, let's keep going here. Uh, Spence Kapat, Kapat, Spence, I can't ever say your last name. Spence from Long Island. I'm really dis- depressed. There's no AHL, AHL, and no men's league. So, Spence, here's the thing. I've got no NHL. I've got no AHL, ECHL, SPHL. Uh, and my adult league team has got shut out tonight. Down. Rinks are closed. No one's going out. That's why this is now your destination for hockey talk. We don't have to be depressed here, even though we are. We don't have to be because this is it. I would actually have a beer in my hand, but children may be watching do with that what you want. Okay, Danielle uh, Maglione. Is it Maglione or Maglione? Danielle comment says she agrees with Lee. I agree with Lee. We have something else in common. All right, quick break here to let you guys know what the tea of the night is. It's a jasmine tea. I do a lot of podcasting for those of you who don't know. So I always have a tea uh, with an uh, 88 Lindros cup tonight, right? Uh, we always joke, don't drop it. It might break. <laughs> Lindros jokes. Oh, God, I hope you're smiling at my my dad jokes because God knows someone has to. All right, let's keep going here. All right, uh, again, keep commenting with your things. So, again, we're talking about hockey tonight. We're talking about Alex Ovechkin. Here he is. Can Alex Ovechkin, not assistant captain Alex Ovechkin, uh, current captain, can he beat Wayne Gretzky in goals? I feel like dark helmet in space balls right now. No. Did you see anything? No, sir. I didn't see you playing with your toys. Um, I can confirm I don't play with these when no one's around. I can confirm that. Um, can Alex Ovechkin catch Gretzky? And is Alan Ovechkin, Alan, Alex Ovechkin, the greatest goal scorer of all time? Again, retiring Wayne wants to know. Um, again, if you look at statistics here, this guy's putting up 50 goals a season, uh, probably this season too. <laughs> um, and it, it, it is is obtainable keeping in mind this is a record that no one thought would become obtainable and it became very real i think uh earlier this season we started talking about actually i remember last season talking about a little bit hey if he keeps going like this he's going to catch gretzky um and then now that he's hit 700 it's becoming kind of a real deal um you're you're in you're in a territory where not many people have that Uh, i think i can't remember who it was i think uh esposito said that more people have landed on the moon than have scored 700 goals in the NHL, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. Um, and he's still going up the list. So listen, if he can maintain his pace for two more years, uh, he's going to quickly get to 800. Now, the, the the key number in this chase is 802. If he can get to 802 and surpass Gordie Howe in goals scored, 
that becomes a super duper race, all right? Because like I remember when Gretzky uh, passed Gordie Howe, it was a massive deal. Um, and there was a really cool thing. In fact, the NHL, this is really cool. I don't know how many people um, kind of watched this stuff back then. But uh, the NHL presented Gretzky with a book <laughs> of every score sheet from every game he had ever scored in after he broke that record. And as you can imagine, it was over 800 pages. So it was, it was a pretty amazing uh, gift. Um, Ovechkin is going to get there as well. I mean, I think, I think passing Gordy Howe is, is inevitable, barring health um, and, and hockey being played, obviously. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but it, it, it's an amazing accomplishment. And the thing is, the, the other thing I want to impress upon everybody, and it, it's not lecture at all, like this is just me talking. I think a lot of you share this, is that, um, you know, when Ovechkin and even Crosby, I mean, I'll throw him into this. When you get players like Ovechkin and Crosby, specifically Ovechkin with what we're talking about, get to the point where they're entering this kind of greatness uh, time period, already obviously Hall of Famers, uh, both cup champions, um, you know, going to break milestones. You almost have to put fandom aside at this point and start to enjoy the player. And I'll give you an example of a player of the past that I spoke about who, who sadly is going to be retiring, might be retired right now, actually. Um, it, and that's Yamir Yager, who's probably my favorite player in NHL history. Um, but I always said the last five years of his career, specifically when he was in the NHL, to you know, some of the kids I coach and some of the people I, I work with, that look, you got to enjoy Yager right now because he's not going to be here forever, um, as we know, right? So, you know, I, the way I look at it is Ovechkin's got time left. Crosby has time left. But even as a Flyers fan, you know, I marvel at Crosby and how good he is. Now, you won't hear many Flyers fans say that, but he is probably the best overall player in the game in terms of Crosby. Ovechkin is the best goal scorer in the game. Uh, I'm a hockey fan first and a Flyers fan, wh whatever the smallest measurement is beneath that. Um, but my, my, my love for hockey supersedes my love for one team. So when I, you know, I enjoy watching Ovechkin and Crosby play the game because again, time is finite, man. They won't be around forever. Um, and you can say like, oh, we got McDavid's and we got these guys. Uh, generational talents are rare and we have to enjoy them. You know what I mean? Like the truth is this, most NHL players are very expendable in terms of being moved on their team. Um, and that's, that's something that, you know, usually scares people, but you got to think about that. Really, most players on a team are movable. Ovechkin is not. Crosby is not, right? Uh, Giroux probably is not, if you look at the Flyers, right? Gretzky was, but in many different days, in many different ways, that's another show. Okay, let's go back to the comments. Um, uh, let's go. Okay, Brian Miles says, this season. Okay. Caitlin Elizabeth, always laughing at my dad jokes. Well, thanks. I, I'm a dad with... I even have broken headphones on tonight, which is a so super dad thing to do. Uh, Brian, uh, let's go. Brian Miles says, uh, when do you think the NHL will resume play? I'm going to take this as a hockey question and not as a medical question. Um, uh, I think they're taking the right precautions here. I think when uh, players are in the clear and people in the clear, it'll come back. I, I do. I'm very optimistic that we will see uh, an ending to this season um, if, if everybody works together in this country to <laughs> get past this time. And I think that's going to happen. Uh, America and Canada, we, we step up when things are on the table. I, I think we're stepping up now. Even though I know a lot of people are feeling panicked and kind of uh, uneasy right now, this is unprecedented and weird, we step up. And you can you can put take the money to the bank on that. They're, they're, we're going to step up with this too. I really believe that. Uh, it's a good time to tell you that I am an optimist, but I do believe what I'm saying right now. I do believe we are going to step up. Um, Let's keep going. Uh, Pat Silva, you should get a Hartnell team mug. Don't drop it because Hartnell down. So for those of you who don't know that outside Philadelphia, Scott Hartnell, who used to play in Philadelphia, uh, used to have an organization called Hartnell down. He probably still does because he fell on the ice so much. But no, not the Eric Lindros mug. The Eric Lindros mug is very delicate, and you have to make sure that it's upright and has its head up all the time. And you can see in the mug, if you look in the mug, his head is up. Okay, 88, Hall of Famer, Flyers Hall of Famer. There you go. All right, uh, Caitlin Elizabeth, a Hartnell, Hartnell mug will always find a way to fall. That's true. <laughs> All right, Patrick Benelli. He is definitely amazing goal scorer. I'm a huge Lightning fan, and I was in the building during that Game 7 loss to the Caps in the Eastern Conference Final. I know that was probably devastating. They went on to win the Cup, of course, that year. He is definitely a regular season goal scorer, but always struggled in the playoffs to score goals. What do you think he did prior to that Cup to change his play in the playoffs, and do you think he will score more in the playoffs in the future? And do you believe he will raise another cup? Patrick, this is a great, great question. All right. Um, and I'm going to address it on multiple fronts. Okay. Um, I think the difference when he won the cup and not winning the cup is uh, another human being named Barry Trotz. I think Barry Trotz, who was the, the coach of the Washington Capitals the year they won the cup, 
found a way to get the absolute best out of Alex Ovechkin. If you remember him that season, he was a complete workhorse. He did everything on offense and defense. He was everywhere. And and we got the best version of Alex Ovechkin. Um, so I think in terms of the regular season, that's thing. That's that's one thing. Um, uh, postseason points. So so we, we just got to separate this a little bit. Remember, postseason scoring does not go towards the record for the greatest goal scorer of all time. It's a different statistic. And I'm glad that they do that because in the postseason, different players can step up. Uh, and prove that once again, hockey is the greatest team sport in the world. So many examples of this. For example, in the uh, 1984, sorry, 1984 Stanley Cup final, when Gretzky was not the MVP, it was Mark Messier. Um, in the 2000 Devils fans, if you're listening, you might have to help me with this one. But I believe in 2003, when the Devils beat the Ducks, I remember Mike Rupp, who's an analyst now on NHL Network. Mike Rupp scored two goals in, I think, I think the last game. I don't remember if it was game seven or not. Out of nowhere, nobody knew who he was. And Mike Rupp did not go on to become a goal scorer in the NHL. He's known mostly for his antics and now his hockey knowledge. Um, but the postseason's a crazy thing, right? And the best player doesn't always step up to the plate. Um, again, another show we'll talk about, did Sidney Crosby deserve his MVPs in the playoffs? Um, but, you know, it, what I looked at is, and, 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 and this is actually, this kind of plays into this Crosby thing a little bit. When you look at postseason play, it's really more about the overall play. So Ovechkin might have done other things in that postseason that were very valuable um, to help his team win. And sometimes that's motivating. And here's the thing. If you're in the playoffs, if you're in the Stanley Cup final, who are you targeting? You're going to try and neutralize Ovechkin. The question is, can the second, third, fourth line step up? And a lot of times they do. Um, the two times that Crosby won the MVP back-to-back, um, he was the best player on the ice overall. Uh, again, look, there's always two or three players you can make the argument deserve the uh, the Conn Smythe, but uh, overall he was the best player on the ice. And I'm saying that as, as, again, as most of you are, I'm a hockey person, so I watched him. He played defense, he played offense, he was everywhere, and he contributed everywhere. Um, so I, I get all the conspiracy theories about Crosby being – you know, you know, the league is selling it to him and stuff like that. And I don't buy into most of that stuff. Um, again, you could you could clearly make an argument there were other people that deserved it, but you're not going to make a good argument that he didn't deserve it as well. Um, and, and then there's always the argument for like the losing team and someone on the losing team. Keep in mind, losing team players winning the con Smythe is extremely rare, um, and it's usually a goaltender when it does happen. Um, and you got to remember the MVP is for the entire playoffs. A lot of people forget that they just focus on the the Cup final. I mean, if a guy scores 50 points in the first three rounds and doesn't score a goal in the cup final, I mean, he should be up for it too, right? So a lot of different different ways of looking at that. Uh, to keep going with your question, um, do you think he will score more in the playoffs in the future? <clears throat> I think he'll do what he needs to do in order to become uh, a champion, right, whether that's goal score or not. The other great example, actually, of this is Steve Eiserman, uh, if we have any Red Wings fans left or, that are on here. Um, Steve Eiserman was a goal scorer like Ovashkin. They used to call him Stevie Wonder. Um, and if you look at the early on time of his career, like the late 80s, early 90s, he was very Ovechkin-esque in how he scored goals. He was dangling people, moving all around. And Detroit couldn't win anything. They couldn't win anything. And when Scotty Bowman came in, the coach, famed coach, greatest coach of all time in the NHL, undisputed, uh, he f he changed the way Eiserman played to become a two-way player. Now, I'm not saying that Ovechkin should become a two-way player because he's gifted in scoring goals. And I think that uh, a lot of times when you have a player that's that gifted, you want to make sure that you accentuate or amplify what they're good at. But Eisenman turned into a two-way player. He led by example, and Detroit had probably the greatest run in the history of the NHL of a playoff team, even though they're in hell right now. We, we, it's easy to forget that I think they made 25, 26 years in the playoffs, and they had three, four cups in that time. One, two, I think they had three cups in that time period, which is major. It's a major deal, um, especially that longevity, right? So a lot of it comes down to coaching. A lot of it comes down to what the team needs. And do I believe that Ovechkin will raise another cup? Uh, it's a really tough question to answer. Um, I think they're always going to be in contention for it, but uh, I'm a. This is the thing I look at when it talks about the Stanley Cup. It's so hard to win it. I mean, it's it's people like to say, "Oh, it's obvious who's going to win." But it's not. It's so hard to win it. If I asked you last December, not one person in the world would say the St. Louis Blues were going to win the Stanley Cup. And then you get to Game Seven, and people still weren't thinking they were going to win the Stanley Cup, and they did. So you never know. Um, it's it's actually funny because like we were on the live stream yesterday, and a lot of people were uh, jabbing at me about the Flyers. Like, oh, this was your year, and I my attitude is like I appreciate that, I really do. But we are we are so far from winning a cup right now, uh, with twenty games left and the whole playoffs, right? With a team that's largely inexperienced in the playoffs. So it's a nice thought, but I don't know if that's the answer or not. So 
Uh, again, when you get to the, the, the playoffs and there's 16 teams, legit anyone can win. I have seen the 16th team like the LA Kings do it. I've seen the top team do it. Uh, that's what's beautiful about our sport. You never know who's going to win. You know, if you turn to basketball, I can tell you the five teams that are going to win it each year. Like one of the five teams is going to win it. To be fair, nobody saw Toronto coming last year. But <clears throat> like most of the time, I mean, especially over the last 10 years, you know it's going to be Golden State or whatever team LeBron's on. And now it's going to be the Lakers versus whoever. So uh, great question, Patrick. Thanks for bringing that up. It was a long answer. Um, okay, we're 20 minutes in. That's the first period. Can't see what I'm doing. Another dad joke. Oh my God, 20 minutes, then this is the intermission, which means I'm going to take a uh, a sponsored tea break from, who, who makes this tea? Uh, Bigelow, Jasmine Green Tea, in an Eric Lindros mug. Again, if you're listening to this back on playback, thanks for being here. You can still comment, although we're not going to see it. Okay, uh, moving down. Chris Clark, do you think Taves and Kane get another cup before the end of their careers? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, so first thing is Taves and Kane, unbelievable cup runs all three times, including the, the the hat flock out season, which was one of the most dominant teams I've ever seen in the history of the NHL. Uh, the stats on that team, if, if there had been a full season and they maintained it, they would have been a top 10 team in the history of the league. Um, it is a really tough question. They're getting older, both of them. Um, I think it's more likely, <clears throat> excuse me. I think it's more likely that one of those two guys actually goes to a different team uh, than them winning together again. Um, especially as they age, uh, Taves is not the Taves he was during those cup runs. I think you, you, Brian, you let me know. I'm sorry, Chris, let me know if you disagree with that. Uh, Kane seems to be getting better, but they're aging. Chicago's not in a position right now where I think they're going to turn around that fast. And I think they need more youth than age in order to win. So I, I, with that knowledge, I don't think they will. I'm not rooting against them. All right. But I do not think Chicago will win under the cup. Side story for y'all real quick. Uh, Patrick Kane. Let's talk about Patrick Kane. In 2007, the Philadelphia Flyers were the worst team in the league. They had their worst season ever, and they were primed to get that first draft position. So at the 2008 draft, I believe, uh, first overall pick is going to be Patrick Kane. Everyone knows that. And then Chicago just sneaks in with that draft lottery, gets Patrick Kane. Right, we got James Van Reems like who left and came back. Not a bad player by any means, but he's not he's not Patrick Kane. And who scores the game winning goal in Game Six in the Stanley Cup Final against the Flyers? It's Patrick Kane to win the Cup for the Chicago Blackhawks. It stings, it stings still to this day. Great player, great organization. The Chicago Blackhawks helped turn them around, but man, does that suck! And it will not be healed until the Flyers win the Stanley Cup, whenever it is. Moving on. Pat Silva, I believe in Ovi will win another cup, and I agree with you about Ovi. Yeah, look, they're in the running. I, again, I don't. I, it's hard to win. It's really hard to win. I think it's a big deal that he got a cup, right? Um, the Capitals organization, uh, who's owned by Ted Le Le Leonsis, was not run as efficiently as the Pittsburgh Penguins were during their cup runs, right? And that's not a shot at Leonsis. I actually think he's an unbelievable owner. I'm thinking more GMs. I think Ovechkin was miscoached early on in his career. <clears throat> excuse me, I think Ovechkin is a different type of player than Crosby. I think Crosby had more surrounding him than Ovechkin did. And I think that when the Caps won the Cup, they had a perfect storm. So I'd like to see the Capitals in that again, as long as they don't beat the Flyers. Okay. Um, Daryl Lee says he loves Ovi. What's not to love about Ovechkin, right? Like, what's not to love about him? And, you know, sometimes I wonder if this guy, if he was Canadian or American, if he'd give him even more praise. But uh, little, little Ovi right here. I'm a fan. Uh, Pat Silva says Hextall, 1987. I believe you're talking about goalies that have won the Conn Smythe. Uh, Ron Hextall did win it. I know uh, J.S. Jaguar won it in 2003 against the who was unbelievable that year, the whole playoffs. So it does happen. It's typically a goalie. Um, again, both those players, their teams would have been in the final had they not played so good, even though they lost. Again, Hextall losing to the Oilers, J.S. Jaguar losing to the Devils. Okay. Patrick Benelli says, thank you for that answer. And always go Bolts. Uh, Bolts, man. Uh, again, 2004, man. Another scar in my heart, man. Flyers had a great team. Forsberg, LeClaire, Recky, Primo, Gagne. It was like the team of my dreams, and your Bolts beat us one nothing in Game 7 to go to the Cup Final to beat Calgary in seven games. That one hurt. It's the only playoff year I had a hard time watching the finals. But uh, great organization down there proving that hockey can work in Florida and Tampa. Um, and, yeah, listen, Bolts have a great team. They're the they're the capitals of the league right now. Am I, am I wrong? Did anybody disagree with that? The Bolts are the capitals of the, the league right now uh, until they win again. So we'll see what happens. Caitlin Elizabeth, We Live Hockey team member. I just heard the most Philly accent I've ever heard from you, Lee. You've caught the y'all. 
listen, I'm from Philly. Of course I have a Philly accent. So this is what happens. You grow up in Philadelphia. You say yo a lot. You say hoagie water. You know, we use D's instead of T's here. Then you go to broadcast school. Then you go to New York. And then you go a lot of other places. And the accent goes away. Then you move back to Philadelphia. And hey, it's back. Okay. Born here. I was raised here. I'm proud to live here. Philadelphia. Okay. Patrick Benelli, a little off topic. I know about everything that happened last year with the first round. So does the entire world. Do you think the lightning? <laughs> so this is about the lightning. Sorry, I had to laugh there. Do you think the lightning made enough changes to their play, personnel, and style of play to be a contender and to win a cup? Ah, that's a great question. So the the, the lightning last year suffered from uh, being the best team in the league, and the best team in the league doesn't always win the cup. In fact, they rarely do. I think we I think we did something on Elimination Cafe last year where we actually had the stat of how many President Cup Trophy winners have won the cup. It does happen. It does happen, but it's rare. Um, so here's the thing. The postseason is different from the regular season. Okay. And it dep- it's funny because depending on what country you're in, you know, the president's trophy is a big, bigger trophy. Like if you're from Europe, the president's trophy is a big deal because in European sports leagues, the regular season championship is the championship. Okay. Um, in America and Canada, it's not what it is. It's all about the cup, right? So here's what I'll say. Yes. I think they've made changes to be a cup contender, but as I said before, it is incredibly hard to win a Stanley Cup. So you can be great and still lose if you hit a hot team. Look what Carolina did last year. Look what the uh, not the Wild. Look what the Carolina did last year. Look what the Jets did last year. All right. Look what Vegas did two years ago. All right. <clears throat> you just never know. All right. Uh, I'll give you a great example, Patrick, of a team that um, you know made changes and nobody saw them coming. Was the uh, the 2012 LA Kings? Um, they were a team built for the playoffs and they stumbled into the playoffs. But the type of players they put together on the roster and the way they were committed to the playoffs, they ended up, they went and they, they were one of the best playoff teams I've ever seen. In fact, I think they only lost four games on the way to the cup. They went 16 and four, uh, which is, that's unbelievable. All right? they, I remember they lost one game in each round until the final. The Devils beat them twice, uh, which is a testament to the Devils that year. But that was the most dominant playoff team I've ever seen. And they were not a top seeded. I think they were an eight seed going into the playoffs, an eight seed. And they went in and they won the cup. So, Again, you got to keep that in mind. The second season, the postseason, the cup final is a different monster than the regular season. Um, and you can be great throughout the year. But if you don't have that extra level of grit and determination and understanding of the playoffs, you, you might not win. And I think that's what happened to the Lightning last year. Is they're a great team. And I think they went in just kind of with the attitude of, hey, listen, you know, we're going to just keep doing what we're doing. And not saying that was the wrong message to give the team, but they ran into a super hot team that was ready to win. <clears throat> you got swept, all right? And that's 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 the reality of it. Don't worry, I'm a Flyers fan. I'm used to pain. Um, so let me know again. That's, that's kind of the bottom of the comments here. Uh, I think I've made a pretty <laughs> pretty good case for Alex Ovechkin being the greatest goal scorer of all time. No one really is disagreeing with me on that. Um, so, like, I, I, again, this is nothing against Gretzky. Gretzky is one of my favorite people of all time, favorite players of all time. Um, I just don't believe that he's he's at the same level um, uh, right now as Ovechkin is. I think Ovechkin should catch him. Um, again, no, no shot against Gretzky. They're, you know, records are made to be broken. I think it's great that we can even have this conversation about Wayne Gretzky and Alex Ovechkin catching up. So uh, I'm going to stay on here for a, a few more minutes just in case any of you have any other questions. But, yeah, look, this is what I'm hoping to do. If you've been watching this, hopefully it's been an awesome distraction from everything else going on in the world right now. Uh, I want there to be – hockey discussion. I want you to feel like there's a place you can go where we can talk about hockey. Even though there's no games being played, we can discuss this season, seasons of yesteryear, all the fun stuff I have going on in my room right now, like the Gordie Howe behind me. Uh, there's an R2D. does never tell me the odds. There's even a Marty McFly back there. I saw that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But yeah, obviously, let me know if you have any more questions. Uh, the, the idea of this show is to get you to escape. Now, uh, just to get it like to where it is in my life a little bit, my kids are home from school for the next two weeks uh, straight. Uh, that's just the start, right? Uh, I know things are crazy out there. Uh, so, again, let this be your refuge, okay? Let this be where you can go to get rid of that, all right? I'm just going to check on my phone here and make sure that my feed here didn't freeze up uh, in terms of the questions. But I am actually going to upload this as a podcast as well. So you can listen to it back or people can listen to it that haven't heard it. Um, and then I'm going to make this video appear live on the We Love Hockey and Elimination Cafe page. By the way, if you're watching this, you're not part of the Elimination Cafe group. You need to get in there. Um, uh, it's just a lot of fun. That's just the way it is. Right? We have a lot of fun in there. 
Um, so again, let me know. Last call for questions. We're about to hit the 30 minute mark of this podcast, and I want to I want to end it after that. Um, let me know if you have any more questions. If you don't, I appreciate all of you. I know um, that you guys are. I know we're all going through something together out there. And again, I don't want to talk too much about it. I want you to know that we're here together as a community. The whole point right now is for people to come together, whether it's the hockey community or any community, your family. Like this is what we're supposed to do during these times, right? Stick together. It's 2020. I am literally have lighting and a microphone and a HD camera, and I'm able to speak to all of you back and forth. This is a pretty amazing time to be alive in spite of everything. Uh, Caitlin just posted, by the way, the Elimination Cafe group uh, link in here uh, if you're not in there. Uh, Patrick Benelli says, great show. He loves scoring against the Lightning. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and I hope he breaks uh, 800. My brother-in-law is a Philly fan. Go Flyers. Yeah, so um, Pat, in another show, I want to talk about different fandoms from different cities because – uh, here in the Northeast, where all the teams are kind of clustered together, uh, keeping in mind that the Devils and the Rangers are one train stop away from each other. That's really unfathomable when you think about sports. Uh, they're eight miles apart, they're two professional franchises. And then you throw in the Flyers and the Islanders and the Capitals and the Pittsburgh and Boston, and you make a little eight-hour circle in the entire, almost the entire metropolitan divisions in one little tiny part of the United States. Uh, but I've traveled. I lived in Florida. I lived in uh, Fort Walton Beach out near Destin in the Panhandle for a few years when my wife was in the military. I saw a different side of fandom. Um, I went to Texas. I saw a different side of fandom. Uh, you know, growing up in Philadelphia, we're taught to hate Dallas. And I was near Dallas and people were wonderful. <laughs> I go to Tampa. It's just a fun environment where people enjoy the game. It's not crazy. It's not about being tough. Right. And then I go out west to LA and I went to a Kings game and King Sharks game seven. Wonderful environment. And it was very much once basketball starting. But Hockey fans, nonetheless. So um, another show, maybe maybe um, the next time I come on here. So here's how puck drop is what I'm calling this is going to work. I'm going to try and come on around 7 o'clock unless we all think there's a better time to do it. Um, not every night, just kind of as I can so these should appear like games. <laughs> it's just your team plays every few days. Maybe I'll be here every few days. Uh, feel free to message me or We Live Hockey or on Elimination Ca Cafe if you have a cool topic that we think uh, that, sorry, that we would love to discuss, right? So like, this isn't just about me coming up with topics. Uh, this channel is all about the community and all about you. If you have topics to talk about, let me know them because again, I'm one person. And if we try really, really hard, we might even get Travis to come on to one of these. Um, you know, you know, who knows where Travis is right now? This is, that's, that's what's funny about Travis. He is my best friend, like a little brother. So we deal with it. Anyway, that's the 32 minute mark, which means absolutely nothing, but I'm going to end it here. Uh, Caitlin wants to know where Travis is. Ta she tagged him. I don't know where Travis is. He's probably at home uh, enjoying time with his family. So again, once again, I'll, I really appreciate you coming on here to listen to this. If you're watching this on playback, uh, feel free to jump in the next time. Again, I, I, I really hope this has become a distraction for you from everything else going on in the world. Try not to, to dwell too much on social media. The weather here in Philadelphia was beautiful today. I went out for a walk with my son. Didn't touch anybody, but we did go out and, and enjoy the air. We're going to get through this together, and hopefully hopefully, I will have to stop doing these shows at 7 o'clock because the NHL is back soon. Okay, now this is the part of the episode where it gets really awkward because I have to figure out how to end this on my desktop. I see the end live video here. And I'm going to click it, but sometimes these things lag. But most likely, this is the end of this, this version of this. So Pat Silva says, thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you for being here. All of you, have a wonderful evening. Again, message me. We Live Hockey, Elimination Cafe, or find me on Facebook. Um, and we will talk to you soon. You guys are the best. The hockey community is the best. I will see you guys soon.